Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for CBS 8's AAPI special, honoring Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. President George Herbert Walker Bush expanded the celebrations from a week to a month in May of 1990. I was invited to attend that ceremony in the White House Rose Garden as the youth ambassador for the Organization of Chinese Americans. I remember how special it felt as a teenager to have an entire month dedicated to honoring AAPI heritage. Now we introduce you to local community leaders with roots in Southeast Asia. 58,000 Vietnamese Americans call San Diego home, making up more than 13% of the AAPI population. Heather Hope shares some of their incredible stories of survival. Overcoming incredible odds, we hear from three former Vietnamese refugees who would let poverty, a communist regime, or lack of education stop them from coming to San Diego and achieving the American dream. For the boat people, refugee, we all share very similar stories. These three Vietnamese American business leaders have found success in San Diego, but the long road to get there started in Vietnam, where they were all born in poverty, amid political turmoil, and were desperate to get out. Uh, I witnessed the, the harbor police shot and killed my brother right in front of me. After the Vietnam War, Jimmy Tai was just a teenager when he tried to escape 15 times. But I'm determined, so I told mom, if none of them want to go, give me a chance to keep going and keep trying. Jimmy says the dream of going to college motivated him to continue to flee by boat. You try to survive, you know, the 20 years old rickety boat in the middle of the ocean. And that's why I went so many times, went out there a couple of days, the boat just completely, the engine just stopped. Stranded in the ocean with no GPS, Jimmy's boat was captured and all were sent to prison, where he also escaped and has the mugshot to prove it. It's, it's extremely, extremely daunting. Jimmy's wife, Lily Tai, says her family fled their Vietnamese fishing village when she was nine years old with just the clothes on their backs. Lily left her only sweater. And it got caught on the bamboo, and I have to let it go because that's the only thing of my private possession. And you know, you know, at the same time, I heard gunshots look like bang, bang, bang. Lily's family was chased by police until they made it aboard a boat to China. I got seasick. I still have motion sickness to today, and I vomit, I eat, and everything in that hole for two weeks. Mindy Fokel's father was a South Vietnamese officer until 1975, when communists detained him in a re-education camp prison for seven years, leaving Mindy's family on their own. I was growing up poor too with my sister and my mom who worked every day to support us. Mindy made it to America in 1991. Jimmy arrived in 1984 and Lily came in 1981 after surviving several months in a Hong Kong refugee camp filled with prostitution and gangs. At the young age I learned very quick and fast how to fight, to fight for my spot to cook for my family. With sponsorship from an aunt in San Diego, Lily was grateful to reach dry land in the U.S. When I landed here in San Diego, I was so mesmerized by how much concrete we have. She held a pencil for the first time at Euclid Elementary School, learning English and how to read and write at 10 years old, to later graduating at the top of her Hoover High School class, to meeting her husband Jimmy as a volunteer teacher, to now working as a mortgage broker for 30 years. Mindy is now an award-winning real estate broker who says she worked hard to learn English when she was 18 years old in college, while also working as a retail manager and being a single mom of two. Very proud to be Vietnamese and I'm proud to be American too. Jimmy chronicled his journey from Vietnam to Thailand to San Diego in his book, Five Secrets to the American Dream, Stories of a Boat People Refugee. He went from being a janitor at Miramar College to the vice president of a Fortune 500 company who now builds schools in Vietnam and Cambodia. To me, there's no better statement to describe America oh, as a land opportunity. <laughs> Heather Hope, CBS 8. Such perseverance and what great examples of leaders in our community. All right, Sandy